bird on a tree. Hi everyone, this is Monica Ramirez, Warrior of Love, and uh, we're right now in Soul Talk. Thank you for being here, and if you're seeing the replay, please click replay, I will appreciate that very much. And let us know where you are uh, connecting from. And today we have a very special guest for me, Leonora uh, Pif uh, Piffer. I hope I got it right. <laughs> if not, I'm so sorry about that. But let me tell you who is Leonora first. She's a sound alchemist and light code frequency anchor for the new earth. She facilitates activations in both solar light codes and sound frequencies with a vocal tones and crystal singing bowls and crystal pyramids. She shared this gift, uh, gets on Facebook uh, Live and YouTube pri and private uh, sound sessions are available by appointment. She is also a classic trained vocalist and a professional singer and songwriter of sacred music. You can find her information of her Facebook and uh, her YouTube in the description. And thank you, Lenora, for being here with me. I really appreciate that you accept um, my invitation. Lenora and me, we, we met uh, in 2015. I was checking that out. Yes, uh, in that magical group that actually helped us tremendously. We have come so far since then that uh that it was very magical and that since since then it's been a uh what a ride <laughs> since then thank you leonora for being here with me thank you oh thank you for bringing up how we met because joining that very special group really was an activation for both of us it really got us started on our journeys not that we weren't on from forever but it really activated us in a certain direction and it connected us to each other and other people with whom we would be doing the soul work and i'm so grateful oh me too me too you know that i know we all have different awakenings and for us the experience of awakening was different and uh can you tell us a little bit about yours how was yours it's still happening. I think I think I wake up in stages. So I had um, a chemically assisted awakening at the age of of 23, which really got me in touch with myself. It got me in touch with my with my soul. It got me in touch with my body. But then that sort of got set aside and, and regular 3D life got in the way. But I just started gradually having awakenings, uh, studying Reiki, studying uh, Kabbalistic healing, all, all, uh, and uh, being an ordained priestess. So each, each thing put another layer of awakening. And most of my awakenings have been wordless realizations, epiphanies, uh, clear cognizance of suddenly knowing, but not being able to reduce to words. So this is an ongoing process. More and more is awakening. I, I do agree. We go into stages and there are different levels and different layers and layers and layers that we we discover in ourselves. And uh, and yes, epiphanies that are, that they are very important for all of us aha moments those aha moments are the ones that take us to a different level one. And... One. and i never tell myself ah oh, this is it no this is just as the, at that moment that's what that is it doesn't make it truth ultimate truth that makes it true for me now at this moment yes and that frees me for the next moment. Yes, that that is very true. Because we don't where people tell me where is we're gonna stop advancing or ascending. It. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. The universe continues expanding. So I don't know where we're gonna where how far we're gonna go or how 
I know there is layers and layers and layers that you discover one and there's another one underneath, but there are more things that we have to work on and heal and uh, and the process is continue going and that's what it keeps us alive and and continue and curious at the same time to see that's what is next. Curious. Mm -hmm. There's this, I said familiar phrase, you know, beginner's mind. But it's, it's this curious, it's this innocent curiosity where you don't know what it is. You don't have preconceived notions what it is. And it allows it to be exactly what it is presenting for you at that moment. Mm -hmm. Curious, what is that? Like sun gazing, for example. Wow, a lot of activations just with sun gazing. What is that? What are these colors? What are these shadows? What, what is being signaled to my soul with these light code flashes? It's not translatable, but it's curiosity that draws me in. Yeah. And that's why it keeps us alive at the same time and hopeful that there is something more in there. And that is important in a, the process of ascension for all human beings, I believe so. It's and, trust. It's 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 a trust. Yes. Earth is expanding. We're expanding. We trust that this goes on. We trust that this is happening. Yes. We're trusting in ourselves. We're trusting in humanity as a collective. Yes, it's different layers of of surrendering at the same time. We surrender one part, but there is more. There's always something more to trust. Yes, it is. It is a surrender. It's a, it's a total surrender and a total trust at each moment. How do you discover the light language and uh, and and the, your path? Because we all have different paths and different missions, and you're becoming like really, really known, and 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 your music is just beautiful. How do you discover that was the way of going? Because they became Reiki became a priestess but how do you discover this was for you i've always been a singer i mean since i was a wee one i i, I was a singer and the the light language it was actually suggested to me to join a, a unity consciousness group and maybe this was in 2016 i don't know and people were speaking light language and 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 there was something that I understood about it, but I could not possibly translate into words, but I, I, I had a, a, an understanding, a comprehension of it. And then I'll, just privately at home, I just started opening up my mouth and just letting sounds come out. And if somebody said, oh, that's a Lyran dialect. And I, I didn't, I had the dialect, there's dialects? You mean there's neighborhoods? You mean, you mean the cosmos has, has neighborhoods? I, I have this dialect, you know? So I don't know what the dialect might be. I know that there's something very ancient that I'm, that I'm connecting to, and that I know that even light language is a reduction of the frequencies, and that I go further back into pure tones and, and pure tones are just the frequencies just the sounds and this this to me is the creative spark of the sound this is what moves things this is what creates it's sound vibration pure sound vibration so while i still open up for some light language coming through most of the time that i'm i am doing sound work it's pure tones and can you explain uh, explain to our spectators what do these do to the human being everything is frequency everything everything is vibration everything is frequency if you if you tune a guitar you you, you play a note and then you touch the string a little differently, and then another note comes on many octaves higher, and it's harmonics. So 
they communicate they can communicate with each other they respond to each other so our bodies have frequencies in them every cell in our body has frequencies in it and our bodies respond to frequencies and that's how that's how sound i would say medically reacts reacts to the body but we know how we like to hear music we know how we would physically respond to beat when we want to dance and we listen to the bass and there's something about certain notes that we feel we feel in the heart chakra for instance we don't know why we, we know we're feeling a certain pitch there we just we feel certain pitches certain notes certain frequencies in different parts of the body different mm -hmm. energy centers of the body you could call them chakras but we know we like certain intervals whether it's a major a major third in a major key or whether it's minor we, we're drawn to it it invokes or evokes rather emotion yes it's not in, it's not intellectual it might spark a memory mm -hmm. but it, it evokes an emotion when you're playing i i see you sometimes saying i'm gonna do a heart chakra or plexus solar or something like that. do you plan when you're um gonna uh, play your music or do line language do this is gonna be for the heart chakra or this is gonna be for this or or you just come and later on you say oh this, this was for this when i do line languages i don't know what is gonna be coming out i just it just come and it's like oh it was to anchor this or anchor that but it was i don't know so do you no one is I never know what's going to come out in terms of light language. I never know if something is going to want to come through for light language. I will set up an overall intent of singing bowls that I happen to like the sound of them together. I like to include the heart chakra in most of them. I for immune support and unconditional love. I've been using the high heart singing bowl. Most of the ones that I do outside are high heart. I also have um, a 528 Hertz fourth octave C singing bowl for DNA upgrade and repair. And the universe tends to give me hints on what bowls to bring out or if I should come out. If I see the sun, okay, you need to come out. You need to anchor those, you need to share those. You need to share those light codes, set them up. And how was for you uh, the, the acceptance of your family? Because we all have passed through that. Um, we all have passed through that. Believe me, I am divorced now. <laughs> so, but how, how, how your family actually um accept uh, who you are now because you're you're amazing you're yeah. great but but how that is being how is that by friends and by family have i been accepted now at the beginning i imagine it was harder but but now how is well at the beginning i didn't say anything to anybody about anything uh un until i started with the with the music because that's one thing that my husband has always been very supportive of supportive of that's one thing that my mother has always been supportive of even my 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 sister she's okay a musician so what if it's if it if it can be related to within their vantage point they they can accept it i'm i'm i am a musician now my husband might joke with me about activation but um that's okay because i had to uh, accept layer by layer it's okay they accept layer by layer whatever they can i treat them with kindness 
everyone gets respect and kindness and i don't i don't try and, and shove anything down their throats that it is not within the purview of the of of their relatability just enough to invite them to expand a little but not not a strenuous stretch have you noticed that they have uh opened up more with with the light with the music that now you play for them that they have opened a little bit more to all this yeah i think my my husband does appreciate the light codes he does appreciate the rainbow light in the sun because he will even tell me oh there's light codes there you may you may be interested in seeing this come and see this it's light codes he may he may even be receiving some kind of an activation from it i don't know but as a support and kindness to me he's saying okay there's light codes coming through here now come and get this even if it's from just a photography standpoint so more and more he's supportive of that and um, he's, he was my uh, producer and videographer for my, for my CD. And so he even suggests, okay, time to make your next CD and DVD, time to, time to, to do this. So he even pushes me just knowing that there's something about it that's central to me. So even if he's just being supportive, I'm very grateful. That is good to hear. That is really good to hear. Because I, I believe it's, it is important to have the support from the people that we love. It feels good. It feels really good. <coughs> I, then, them, I totally respect and accept everyone in my family for where they are and what their preferences and choices are. Yes, we we can't force anyone to. Or it's not even respectful if we try to force anyone. It's it's their path. It's their time. Is whenever they choose to. Exactly. We can't force anyone. That was the. I believe that was one of the hardest parts that we have to understand at the beginning when we were waking up. We wanted to share and and we wanted to tell everybody, but at the same time, that's when we start feeling rejections and. It was scary. It was scary. I, scary. I, even my, my students, I tell them when I came out of the closet as a channeler and they laugh at that, but that, that is, I tried to hide it. I tried to hide it. And in fact, my page says at the beginning, worry of love did not even have my name because I was too afraid and not my photo, just a logo. And later on, okay, I put my photo, and later on, I put my name, and that was like coming out of the closet, that's how I call it, that oh, I am a channeler. It goes in process. Yes, it's, it's, it, is, it is difficult. And more for the kind of system that we live. But uh, and you as a channeler, do you know um, what uh, the only channel Lyrians or you channel um, other languages? Or, or you? Know, um, I am a uh, conduit mm -hmm. for uh, pure tones and ancient light language, whatever whatever that is. And I don't I don't have an identification to narrow it down, whether it's whether it is Lyran or just I know it's Andromedan pure tones from my origins, Lyran from how do I say reduction down into the Milky Way for more physicality. So it might be it might be Lyran. But it's it's just a conduit for these tones and um, a conduit or an anchor for the, the solar codes, the, the sunlight codes to come in. And very often I'm able to do them together. If I can go outside or get to a window when they're coming through. Mm. And there's, there's sometimes the sun responds to the tones, that the light actually will respond in the rhythm to the tone of the bowl, as, as though everything is dancing one dance together. 
whether it's the trees and the breeze and then the birds and the sunlight and the balls, everything. It's, it's, it's just, it's just dancing with reality. Within and you know who we are. Do you notice something, um, the changes in your life after you start playing, after you start affronting your own fears and affronting your own things? Have you seen some changes in you? I've seen some amazing changes. I went through a personal willingness to um, be completely on my own about what I do. I mean, I went to like the spiritual mat with myself about it. This willingness to, I'm going all the way. I have to be myself. So I, I had a personal opportunity where I had to do that. And that's okay. I was willing, okay. Everybody is just going to think I'm crazy and that's all right. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank God for, for the communities that we have still, oh, at least in social media. I'm grateful. I'm, yes. I'm very, very grateful because fortunately, my, my local friends, family, co-workers, you know, they think I'm funny. <laughs> so oh, we'll keep Lenora around because she's funny. So that's fine. <laughs> and, and, and nice to people and I'm not confrontational or anything I just do my thing just do my work that's it this is what I do not force converting anybody and this is what I do do you teach classes of uh with the singing bowls or the of light language not light language but singing bowls I do teach that Okay, when, when do you have a new class coming up? Uh, as soon as I get a gathering, when, when I get a gathering, if I get a gathering of, of four people, for instance, I have uh, one person uh, who is going to do a private, a private class with me because she has some specialty instruments that she's going to work with beyond the, beyond the singing bowl thing. So it, we're going to do something special. So if anyone is interested in any of the classes of Eleonora, please just contact her. And she's amazing. And you're going to hear her at the end. You're going to hear a little bit of her, of her music. And uh, so if you're interested, I highly recommend her. And Eleonora, um, do you also channel um, messages or things like that, or, or only um, um, I, I'm looking for another word besides channel. I, I deliver. Mm -hmm. I will get sort of like, I guess I call it like a clear cognizance flash. So I will get a message of some sort and, and deliver it. And the reason I don't say, I don't channel is because I'm here in the body all the time. I stay embodied for it, as opposed to going into a, a, a trance, like a, a actual channel people would go into more of a trance for it, right? Not necessarily. There are many ways of channeling, not only one way of channeling. That's one way of channeling, getting out of, you're staying in your body, just yeah. so uh, not a being comes in. Line language is another light, uh, way of channeling. Um, automatic writing is another way of channeling. Yeah. Receiving yeah. message telepathy. Yeah. Yes, or receiving telepathy messages in a way is channeling. Uh, there, there are many ways of channeling, not, not only one. I use the word channeling because that's the more common known by everybody. But that's... Know that as channeling. Yeah, I, I, I say deliver, delivering. Um, because it's going through my instrument. So the package comes to me, my instrument, and I send it out. So I put myself in as the middle, as the middle person. Yes. So that it, it may be a wording thing, or I may not know that much about 
about channeling. Messages come through and I, I, I will deliver the message if it serves. What I, what I don't do, which I did do years ago, I blurted out out of nowhere. I wasn't woke and I was, it was my workout partner at the gym who was telling me something and I, and I, I gave her some prophecy, which was true, <laughs> but it was like, no, no, you don't do that. You don't go where you're not invited. So I don't, I don't, uh, I don't do that. Um, and often when I'm doing my free live sessions, people will say, do you have messages for me or can I get a reading? And I always say no, because I want them to do their own reading. Yes, I understand. I, I am a Reiki master too. And I, I came to understand, I used to use the word healer and I remove it. I remove it because I believe that uh, we can, no healer in the world can heal. The, the healing has to come from each person and coaches were just guides in reality. And uh, the people has to do their own healing. We can guide them, we can help them, but they have to do their own work. We're facilitators. Exactly. Yes. We, that's the only thing we can do as human. Just like we learned in Reiki, you can't go where you're not invited. If they have yes. not asked for it, we can't, we can't just jump in there. Yes. You and I took the class together uh, beyond Reiki. We took the, the multidimensional yes. healing class together. I know, I remember sitting in it with you. That was yes. life changing. Yes, that was uh, the multidimensional energy healing. Yeah, that was, five, five, that was the name. Healing uh, with Carrie, with Carrie K. Yes, yes, that was that was very very interesting class to have. But it, it just taught taught me a lot about about healing, about facilitating healing, and how that we're holding space for the person to do the work. Yes. And people do the work during the sound journeys. I'm not saying anything. I am providing the sound journeys. I don't give a lick of advice, except wear AirPods or headphones or something for, for maximum sound and be relaxed and don't drive a car. Yeah. You know, you, know, you want to be home and, and safe, but I don't do anything except play the music and they go through their own process. That's it. I just facilitate. Yes, I won't even cool. say, oh, I think this, this chakra is out. I won't diagnose nothing, nothing at all. I may be called to linger a little longer on a particular ball. That's different. Yes. No diagnosing, no healing of the other person. Yes, because in a way we we can take the I feel like we take the power away saying, oh, I'm going to heal you. You're taking the power away of the person and the person is already powerful enough, but they have to do the work. So actually they can anchor that knowledge or that aha moment or, or whatever they have to do so they can continue in their path. Right? So you honor in their power. Exactly. That's the first, that is their, the first thing for healing is mm -hmm. honoring their ability to heal themselves. Exactly. That's the ultimate respect. Yes. Yes. And um, uh, beside of, uh, well, you say that you do private sessions too, right? Yes. And you I do, do private either half hour or full hour sound sessions. This is besides teaching how to play the instruments, but um, private journeys, private sound sessions, sound alchemy sessions. It's good they can to be know. all the chakra bowls, or they can just work, we can just work with some specialty bowls sometimes. 
that's good to know because I'm now our spectators to know that you do that for them. Mm -hmm. okay. Do you have something uh, something else that you would like to to share with uh, before you start uh, playing? Yeah, take care of your bodies. These um, all of the activations, whether it's solar codes or whether it's sound frequencies, they really take a lot of water and they really take a lot of minerals from the body. So we have to really support our own ascension and support our bodies as much as possible. So I'm not trying to sound preachy or anything like that, but drink lots of good water. That's probably the most important thing I could possibly say is drink lots of good water and have minerals. Yeah, magnesium oil is very important for when you're minimize, working. With minimize, um, minimize dehydrating beverages such as alcohol. Protect your auric field. So, yeah. I agree with you. Yeah, this is just minimize it. And I'm saying minimize it, not to vilify any substance. Not to vilify it or to give it any power. Just a recommendation. Yes. Minimize substances that don't serve the body anymore. Yes, I agree. I agree. And uh, in YouTube, uh, you have also your channel where people can hear you. If you yes, I uh, do. I have a YouTube, and it is under, uh, I think, I think it's under Lenora Pfeffer. It's probably under that. Oh my goodness! Uh, let me. My name. How else is anybody going to find me? Let me put it. Uh, let me. I uh, have it here, and. Let me share it in the comments. Yeah, that would be great. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, it's just it's just my under my name, Lenore Pfeffer. I have Instagram also, but I think the YouTube is more substantive because you you'll see anything from the a a three minute activation to a to a 20 minute activation on YouTube. So you get a general idea. And I try and update YouTube about once a week. I do this very organically. Whenever I come on a Facebook Live, it's it's totally pop up. I do not have a set time of doing it. The only time I have a set time of doing it is if somebody books a session, then it's at a particular time. Otherwise, it's 100% organically done. Yeah. Do it when, when you feel called to. Exactly. I, I feel called to it. Often, it, it does relate to the sunlight. If I go out to my backyard and I look at the pines and I see the light coming through, I just pull my equipment back there and hope for Wi-Fi. And I actually had it the other day. I didn't, I shared it on this profile. I, I originated it, I re originated it on my other one, on my Matrix Radio one. That is good. Yeah, it's inspiring. Would you like to, to play? Uh, oh, I would this, be honored. Let me, would you pin the, the video? Hmm. So like that, we have you there. Okay, so we have the sounds and everything. And what I'm going to do is practice what I preach. Even though I said I wasn't going to get <laughs> preachy, here we go. But I'm going to support with some water. And I have just some three balls here in one pyramid. Cheers.
That was beautiful, Leonora. Thank you so much. Thank you, Monica. I felt that in the in the heart and in the crown. I don't know. Um, that was the the intention, or that's what it came out. <laughs> you just pointed here, right? Yes. This and in the, the third heart. Eyeball. This is the third eye. Okay. So I had the third eye singing bowl. I had the heart chakra singing yes. bowl. And I had the sacral. Yes, exactly. And this is the parts I, I felt that that was just beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. And yes, the, the light language that you that you sing. It was different than what I have heard before, or that what I do. It, it was different. Uh, maybe I have not heard before a, a Lyra um, dialect before. Right? Maybe it was being Arcturians or Pleiadians or or things like that. But but it was different. It was it was beautiful. Thank you. Well, you may you may be more acquainted with the modern dialect. The, uh, the the Lyran is very, very, very ancient. Well, they're all ancient, but this one is particularly ancient. And of course, just the tones is before any kind of language, just the tones. You have also a little bit of tonality of Hebrew at the same time. I don't know, I felt that. I'm, I might be wrong, you know. All languages yeah. had their bases from the stars originally so there you will hear ancient way before there was egyptian languages way before there was ancient hebrew so you will definitely hear that that has atlantean lyran that has all of that lineage in there so you definitely would hear ancient hebrew to, to use a, a familiar earth earth language you would hear ancient hebrew or egyptian sound aramaic aramaic or something like that aramaic yeah also also that uh, that that's its own uh hebraic dialect but very very ancient and of course people from the stars landed in these places very okay. ancient that was just beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you for the honor and of sharing this with you today. Thank you. Do you have something else that you would like to add before? Um... Yeah. Have, when, have a beginning and an ending to a session because you can go on forever until you feel that it is done. Mm -hmm. So this is very, very instinctive. It's 100% playing by ear, although I know what these notes are and what they're going to sound like together. But it's important to have an opening and have a closing. And I've been using these, and these have multiple, it's not a single chakra thing. These have multiple things, and I like to open and close with with the pyramids. Um, somewhat of a, a Merkaba effect in doing in doing that. So I, I use various ones. I don't use the ten inch that often. This is a very this is happens to be my personal biggest one. But I use I use a lot of different ones. Did anyone ask any questions from the? Uh, you no, know, I'm seeing that we have. I see that some, we have some people um, watching us, but they haven't write any questions. No questions. So if someone has any questions, please let us know. Yeah, because we have the last few minutes here. Uh, time for a few a few minutes of questions. Not that I would have the answers, but I would certainly acknowledge them. <laughs> or at least acknowledge they have questions. No. Oh. If not, you will see it in the comments later on. For the people that are seeing the replay, please click replay. And if you have any questions, write it down. So like that we can, I can send it to Leonora, so like that she can 
try to answer them. <laughs> I'll do my best. You know, I don't have uh, technical answers per se. My answers will be very, very general. I totally, this is totally 100% organic. Like, uh, I go by the feel, which is very, very different from a lot of people telling you it's going to be this specific frequency, that specific frequency for this organ, for this, for that, because it's not isolated to that. All of your cells hear it. All of your cells hear everything you're thinking. Mm -hmm. So how much the more so all of the cells are going to hear all of these vibrations. And do and why do you choose uh, crystal balls instead of the the regular t Tibetan? Well, you most know, most people most people like the the Tibetan metal ones, and I do have a little Tibetan one. You just find more aliveness in the crystal. Yeah, and I love copper. I adore copper. That's that's one of my favorite metals. But I find that the it is much longer lasting with the crystal. I also feel that the spirit, the, the energy of the quartz is in the bowl. So it just feels more alive to me. Not that there is an energy in, in, in the copper, there certainly is. This just feels longer lasting to me. So the crystal instruments are just speak to me more, but there are gorgeous metal bowls. And I would teach somebody to play a bowl who had a set of the metal ones as well. It's perfectly, it's, it's similar. Sometimes the metal ones are a little bit harder to play. At least that's what I found. I find the, uh, the crystal ones, oh, they practically play themselves. So I find them easy. I find them just very beautiful to be around. Yeah, but it's a quartz. <laughs> but they're more breakable. So when I traveled to, to California, I took my metal one. Yes. So I had a little metal one for travel, and I brought, I brought the metal one to one of my jobs because it was in a small room. And I, I played the ball at one of my jobs. So if I have to travel and pack one up, it can be just the small Tibetan style one, or I will pack up the small DNA one and take it to the Helderberg Mountains and call the Golden Eagle. That's in one of my YouTubes, probably from two Septembers ago, when the Golden Eagle came by, very special. Very, very special doing these bowls outside. Oh, one more thing. I, I'm not mic'd up. There are no special effects with my work. This is totally acoustic. Um, of course, the electronics would be the microphone that would be on the iPad. But otherwise, it's hickory floors, so it's natural wood acoustics. And when I'm outside, it's however it is, me and the birds and the breeze. It's exactly how the sound is outside without augmentation. And it's beautiful. It's real, very real. Thank you, Leonora. Thank you so much. Thank you thank for you. this interview. Thank and you. thank you for the spectators and for the ones that are going to see it later on. I really appreciate it. And uh, and well, the next uh, Sunday in the Heart of the Artist talk, we're going to be having um, an amazing poet, Victoria Feno. And in Soul Talk, the next week, uh, we're going to have Marianne Sabino in her light language. She was one of my, my mentors, too. And uh, also, uh, just wanted to remind you guys that we are going to um, we have the opening right now where the registrations open for the uh, Path of the Heart, the, the retreats for three days. And we're going to start a new challenge in Spanish uh, in the 29th, 30th, and 31st. 
And if you have any questions, please contact me about this. And if you're interested in any of the classes or any of the sessions of Leonora, don't miss her YouTube. Just uh, contact her and go to her YouTube. You, you can, so you can get some activations and you can get, uh, more, if you want more information, just contact her. And thank you, Leonora. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I love you, sister. I love you, sister. Take care. Well, thank you guys. And I appreciate it. We're in Soul Talk. And this is Monica Ramirez, Warrior of Love. Thank you. Thank you, Leonora. Bye-bye.